How would you like to improve your health and keep your family safe? You're listening to the Healthy Home Hacks Podcast, where we firmly believe enjoying optimal health shouldn't be a luxury. Healthy Home Authorities and husband and wife team, Ron and Lisa, will help you create a home environment that will level up your health. It's time to hear from the experts. Listen in on honest conversations and gain the best tips and advice. If you're ready to dive in and improve your well being and increase your energy, you're in the right place. All right, here are your hosts bow biologists, authors, media darlings, vicarious vegans, and avocado aficionados, Ron and Lisa Barris. Friends, it is time to stop breathing in harmful biological and chemical contaminants. It's time to take control of your health, breathe better, and sleep more soundly. This episode of Healthy Home Hacks is brought to you by IQ Air First in Air Quality. IQ Air is the top air quality technology company and has been around for over 60 years. In fact, they provide the largest global air quality platform. In addition, they're the maker of award-winning medical grade air filtration solutions that are Swiss made, high performance air purifiers with something called Hyper HEPA filtration technology. This technology removes 99.5% of airborne particles down to 0.003 microns. Guys, that's as microscopic as the smallest virus. Plus, their filters last 38% longer than ordinary filters and are individually tested and certified. In fact, it's the air purifier we personally use and trust. Whether you're looking for a portable air purifier for your home, your office, your car, a whole house filtration system that fits right into your HVAC system, or an air quality monitor for your home, they've got you covered. Visit IQ Air online at www.iqair.com to download their air quality app today and to find the ideal home air purifier for your needs. Oh, and don't forget to head to ronalisa.com to enter for a chance to win your own IQ air quality air monitors. Nikola Tesla once said, if you only knew the magnificence of three, six, and nine, then you would have a key to the universe. But can we manifest the future we deserve through using our best numbers? In other words, can telephone numbers, bank account numbers, and business and resident address numbers determine a person's level of income, health status, and how that person gets along with other people? Our guest today and world-renowned numerologist, Jesse Kelsey says yes. Jesse is a world-renowned numerologist. He specializes in residential and business numerology and provides valuable insight on the power of numbers and how they affect our lives. In his books, The Power of Home Numbers and All About Numbers, he combines his Eastern upbringing with his Western experience to bring awareness and understanding of this phenomenon. Over the past 20 years, Jesse has consulted with thousands of people and positively affected their lives. His clients include prominent business people and successful companies. Jesse has appeared on numerous radio and TV shows in the US, and he was a successful real estate broker by trade. But Jesse is also a certified Federal Aviation Administration flight instructor and holds a commercial pilot's license. He received his bachelor's degree in India and holds an LLM in international legal studies from Golden Gate University in San Francisco, California. Jesse graduated from the National Defense Academy of India and pursued advanced studies at the Indian Military Academy. He served as a captain in the 1st Battalion, 3rd Gurkha Rifles, formerly called the Queen's Own. Jesse left the Army when he was informed of his true life's purpose. He originally came to the U.S. to learn to fly, but eventually returned to make his home in California with his family. Welcome to the show, Jesse. Thank you. Welcome. Great to be here. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being with us today. I freaking love this topic and can't wait to learn more. So let's get started. Okay. Jesse, what is the influences and qualities of each number from one through nine, as well as what you call the amplifier zero? Excellent. Okay. So so what I practice is the Vedic tradition of numerology. Like you're aware, there are many schools of thoughts and numbers. You know, the Hebrews have a system, the Greeks have a system, 
the Chinese follow a certain system. Here in the North Americas, we look at numbers differently, right? But what, what I follow is the Vedic tradition where in you associate numbers and planetary energies. So uh, to answer these questions, number one to number nine, so each number has a planetary association with it. Now, say, for example, number nine is Mars, or number five is Mercury, or number one is Sun, or number three is Jupiter, or number six is Venus. So it goes like it's all planetary. And so we, when you look at numbers, you know, we do not look at just numbers by themselves. We look at the planetary energy behind it. And then when they combine into different numbers or as they increase, right, we first look at the planets behind them, and then we arrive at conclusions. Mm, okay, so how many numbers, it just goes up to nine, and then does it repeat? So... Yeah. So let me give you a quick example. Now, say, for example, number nine. So I am influenced by the number nine because if you look at my name, Jesse Kelsey, I'm using the Chaldean code, it adds up to a number nine to 27. Okay. The number nine is so like a nine, 18, 27, 36. It keeps all nines, right? Well, just let's go through it quickly. So what you're saying is, is the letters of your name, each letter has an associated number. Yes. And when you add up those individual numbers from each one of those letters, it creates a number. Yes, it does. Can you walk through our listeners how they can do that, for example? They're different codes, but I use the Chaldean code. And you can get that online. That's the Vedic code. So okay. it's okay. available online. Because I've heard of the Gematria, right? Is that similar? That's different. So there, there are many codes there. See, the Chinese have a different one here in the Americas. The, the different codes are different by different people. But what I use is the Chaldean code. So if I say my name is Jesse Kelsey, and number nine, so I'm saying it because I use the Chaldean code and because I practice Vedic tradition. And the reason I do that is because I find that it's more accurate than the other ones. I mean, they might be just as good, but that's what I feel that this one is more accurate. Now, so going back to what I said earlier, so see, my life is influenced by number nine. And why I say that is I'm on, born on April the 3rd of some year. So this business is all about harmonizing energy. So we have to harmonize our lives using numbers is, is what I practice and what I do. So on my date of birth, the planetary energy that vibrates is number threes and number nines. Three is Jupiter and nine is Mars energy. And that's the reason why I wear this color all the time, too, to match that Mars energy. And my name, Jesse Kelsey, I've matched it on Mars energy or my uh, the place where I live is a V27 tree of many years. And much like this, I also wear a ruby in one hand. I wear a red coral in the other hand. Oh, wow. So it's colors and numbers. Colors, numbers, and planetary energy. And, and quite a bit of other stuff, too, right? It's all about harmonizing, like I said. That is arrived by our date of birth. You know, by each date of birth, we can know the best numbers, and then we kind of find you. Now, say, for example, if I say number nine is my best number, and I'm living in number 27 now, I lived in the 36 earlier many years ago. So you can ask me, hey, Jesse, how about living in a number 108 or a 81? You know, why would you not live there? Mm. And the oh, I see. Is, I tell you yeah. why. Because one and eight is sun and Saturn energy. And sun and Saturn, you know, when do they come together? They collide. Oh, These wow. Four, okay. Yeah, so, so you have to know that. that. Yeah. <laughs> you have to know that. That is right. So if I tell you, hey, Lisa, find a number nine, and you say, hey, Jesse, I found this great number. It's the number 81, you know? But you told me nine is a good number for me, right? Yeah. But that is, I have to tell you exactly what it is, how they work. Can we pick up this a little bit for our listener? Yes. So real quick, so there's I'm gonna break this a number down. around your name. There's a number around your birth date. Yes. The one for your name, what does that dictate in your life for the name first? Well, actually, can we just back up a second? Because I want to explain if I'm getting this correct. I'm going to take a simple word, ABBA like the band, ABBA, A-B-B-A. Yeah. So A would be a one. B one, would two, be two, one. one, two, two, one. So that's two, four, six. Okay, so that's a number six. So six is Venus energy. And Venus is, you know, is the business of music, art, creativity, mm. money. It all comes to that. So just that vibration of the name is very powerful. It's like Tesla. See, Tesla has the energy of a number six. That comes to that. And, and 16 is big business too. It's huge, big business. But 16 is seven, right? Or do you... Yeah, no, it's a different. It's water. It's not seven. Not like the number 18. It's a different. It's like the White House. It's 1600. But it's a 1600. And that's why there's chaos there all the time. Oh. That's the address. But when it comes on a business, it is different. When it comes on an address, it is different. Okay. Yeah. So that's how it goes. It's very tricky. So like our address is 111. One, some three times is a good number though. But then again, go back to... You know, what day and month you're born and what day of Ron's born, you're kind of working together. So those numbers will definitely come into play. But triple one is a number, is a definitely a strong number. And a lot of banks have it, you know? Yeah. And sometimes it's always good. Oh, okay. So, but would you call that triple one or would you call that three if you were looking up the meaning? It's like three aces, you know? Mm, okay. 
you wouldn't refer to the number? Because I know in certain numerology, you're always coming down to a single number. Is that different in the Vedic? It's a different. It's, it's like sun three times. Sun okay. three times is fame. Fame, it means that you got well-known, you know, from that energy. Oh, you see? Mm, interesting. Sun is fame, right? And it shines right on that number. And one is the sun? One is sun, yes. Yeah. The sun, 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 three times. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Some planets, would you say, have negative energy that you kind of want to avoid that number? No. So what happens is every number has an energy, right? But every number is not good for everybody. So that's how it goes. I should now give you another example, like number eight, right? So, you know, people love the number eight here and Orientals love it. And eight, 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 they say it's very auspicious. And now what happens is if you look at it from the Vedic tradition, that perspective, number eight is represented by the planet Saturn. Now, Saturn is a cold planet. We all know that. Saturn is slow. Saturn is deliberate, right? Moves very slowly. It takes two and a half years to go from one cycle to the other, from Mars to the other. And then Saturn does not work for, with everybody. Saturn is the color black. Right? Oh, Saturn is it really? Down. Yes. Saturn works on your lower chakras. It'll go right from your sacral down to your feet, right? That's how it goes. I've seen a lot of people, right? There's someone told them to write a number eight and stick it in your wallet, right? You attract money. No, it doesn't happen like that. That number eight, see, if you have a five, like a Mercury date of birth, say, for example, if you're born on a 23rd or a five or, you know, Mercury energy, 14, that energy, then eight will work for you because it's like wearing an emerald and a, a blue sapphire. So that's how that connects. But say, for example, if you have a one day of birth or even someone like me who has been born in April 3rd or some other, I would never do that. I would never put an eight in my wallet and walk around. No, it that would block everything. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. Do you only count your month number and the day or do you actually count the year too? Well, I mean, you look at the whole energy, but I, I have a, a bunch of calculations. Here. So what day and month are you born? I don't want to ask you the year anyway. So. Okay. Mine is September 1st. So it's 9-1. So, so basically, yeah, September 1st, again, see your triple one, you're sitting in that sun energy. And September 1 on top of that, you're a Virgo. Virgo is by Mercury, and Mercury is communication. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're communicating with the world. Mm. Oh, okay. So, yeah. What's good for him? What color? Green. Amber. Oh, okay. Green. Thank you for that. Yeah, some green shirts. Okay. <laughs> and then I know we're asking about ourselves. What about me? I'm August 24th. Oh, August 24th. Okay. August 24th, again, is very powerful energy. So you have Jupiter and Venus energy. Oh. So that is really good. Right from the beginning, and you know, you're growing up, you know, there's a lot of attraction around you. Oh, nice. There's always, there was like energy floating around you. It's good for... Well, I was attracted to her, so that's what I want. <laughs> so growing up before I met you. Oh, okay. I see. Never mind. And so what color would those planets be, Jupiter and Venus? Yeah, Jupiter and Venus is more like the light yellow, blue. Those colors are really good. So you're wearing blue wearing already. Blue. There you go. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't normally wear blue, but I'm in a blue mood. Yeah. It's really interesting, Jesse, because Ron and I studied traditional numerology a bit. And the color therapy, we've had actually guests on that talk about the subconscious power of color to the point yes. that we have integrated those aligning with our chakras. Like if Ron is giving a presentation, he'll sometimes wear blue if he knows he's going to be speaking. Do you agree with that kind of? You do. Yes, I agree with that. But the thing is, you know what? If Ron even wears the color black, it'll work for him, you know, because you know why he's ruled by Mercury, which is number five, it won't bother him. Oh, right? Okay. In your case, I say, no, see, when you ask me your numbers and I said threes and sixes, which is like more Jupiter and Venus energy, and Venus yeah. is blue, I said yellow and the blue color. Now, see, you're wearing blue, but there's yellow in the back. Yeah, that's weird, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's feeling powerful. Yeah. And what's Ron's color is green. He's just Mercury. Or did you have another planet, Ron? You got sun as well. Oh, sun. Yeah, that yellow background is excellent for him too. Yellow. Okay, yellow and green. Yeah, and light colors. But then again, Saturn just changed houses recently, Vedic tradition. So his times kind of become very powerful now, too. Oh, as the planets move, yes. we have to actually adjust to a little bit to this? Yeah, planetary energies keep changing and then cycles keep changing. And see, nothing is constant. Everything is kind of in the state of flux. Everything is moving. Yeah. So it's interesting because I had heard it was a guru and I, you probably know he's kind of a well-known, I can't think of his name, but had talked about black absorbs energy. So traditionally, obviously here in the U.S., people wear black to a funeral, but he was saying that's really not a good thing to do because you're going to absorb the sad energy. You don't normally see people wear white to a funeral, but that would be a better color because then you're actually... White kind of throws it away and black pulls it in. Yeah. You agree with that too? Yeah, of course. I agree with that. It does that. Black is satin energy. You know? Black basically is sadness, but then the satin also then is big money too, by the way, if it works with you, right? See, so it mm. rules Capricorn, the first sign, right? The Saturn energy. 
There's so much to this. Yeah. (laughs) This is a whole science. My mom was into astrology when I grew up. So I was exposed a little bit. And I remember it hurt. She would get the chart from Edgar Cayce and all of this. And I was like, oh my God, it's so complicated. In this, do you need to know the exact time of your birth or just your date? Yeah, I mean, there's more information needed, but I can, you know, because with my experience, I can pick up a lot of stuff, right? See, 24 as a number on a date of birth is considered to be very auspicious. Ooh, that's me. 24 is very auspicious. See, you know, a lot of people, what they do is because two and four, it has the energy of moon and Uranus. Twos and fours. And this combination of moon and Uranus is very powerful. Oh. So what a lot of people do is, you know what, if things are not working well for them, you know, they, they'll get a 24. And they'll stick it on the south side of the, you know, the back of the number to the, on the south wall. Yeah, this is done very commonly. Really? Interesting. In, yeah, in brass gold colors. Oh my gosh. You stick out somewhere, if you find someone's not doing too well, they don't know what's going on, right? Have a 24 in brass on the south wall with the back to the south, south wall. wall. In brass color or does it have brassy, to be in Yeah, brassy, like a brassy 24. Brassy. Yeah, wow. that, that, that's used a lot, you know. And, but in general, 24 is a very auspicious number. It's really, really good. And so is uh, Ron's one. One is, I've known so many other, I'm sure you know a lot of people. And I have many celebrities in India who I work with all the time. And many have this one energy and they're famous. And they're right, the one energy. Yeah, Ron's, oh, wow. Ron's always okay. been kind of a showboat. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> he came into the world a showboat. <laughs> now I know why. It's all because of the number one. It's so interesting, right? And then do we deal with zero? What, what does that mean? The amplifier? Zero, the amplifier. That expands the energy. It takes it up or it you know, amplifies it in a certain way, right? Like I said earlier, though, say the example, 108 or Sun and Saturn coming together, that's kind of a difficult combination. So, But let me quickly tell you what that does too. Say, for example, if that number of Sun and Saturn comes on your residence, and just for example, it'll attract things like cuts, injuries, accidents, family court, legal trouble, separation, oh. divorce. That's just sit on the door personally. Very challenging. What are the numbers that are Sun and Saturn? One and eight. Oh, so you don't want that combo? No, 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 don't want that at all. Oh, okay. Mm. You will meet anybody? Yeah, no, no, big no. And if you have a one eight oh oh, then you're going to amplify that. There you go. As what you get kind of calling there, yeah. I'm getting there. Playing that, yeah. <laughs> so that further amplifies it. So we don't want that at all. Oh my gosh, it's so interesting because I, I mean, I'm into feng shui. Also, I've studied that. I used to be an yeah. interior designer, and it's very powerful. Are you a believer in feng shui as well? Yeah, I do. You know, I mean, I've I had a lot of stuff. And I'll tell you quickly about feng shui, what they say is if things are being, and besides the numerology part, if things are not working, there's one fix that you can do all the time. Is, and then that's the southwest corner. Put some weight there. Put some what? Weight. Weight, which would be what? Weight, when you get you know, a picture of pillars or you put a safe there, you know? Oh. Oh, southwest corner. Okay. Southwest corner is Taking that. notes, southwest yeah. corner, right? That is the most interesting fix, right? You can put a safe, like a big safe there. Oh. But the safe should face northeast. The wall of the safe should be touching the southwest area and then it should be facing northeast. Because the flow of money comes from there, north, northeast. That's how this they do the vastu shas. So this is one technique that we should always, you know, it's like a foolproof technique. Yeah, that's really incredible. Color that, this, you know, bago and all that. People do a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. That is one thing. Wow, it's amazing. It's amazing we really aren't taught this. Like, I guess in India, it's different, right? Is this pretty commonplace in India? Yes. There are a lot of secrets in the very wealthy, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Into this big time, you know, they do mm-hmm. that. Wow. We're into frequencies. We're into the healing power of certain frequencies, which obviously Nikola Tesla was into that. Yes, absolutely. I believe in that. Are you talking about the, the music for 32? Yeah, 432, yes. 528. And listeners, we've talked about this a little bit, but it's so incredible. Well, actually, how they changed the frequency that music was played at from 432 to 440, which 440, they say, has like a negative energy. And 432 is a very healing. I think 528 is the actual love energy, but 432 is like a, if I'm getting that right, I might have it reversed. It's attached to the resonance of the earth. Schumann, the Schumann yeah, resonance, yeah, the yeah. resonance of the earth. And so anyone listening who's dealing with any ailment, that's a powerful thing that those frequencies, just listening to that, just having your body, because we are semiconductive, we're, we're yes. made up of mostly water. Yeah, so... I knew this was going to be an interesting conversation, Jesse. We haven't even gotten past the first question. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I still have from the first question, too. So real quick. So listeners are listening to you. They're saying, OK, I have a number with my name. I have a number with my date of birth. You know, w- what is the difference between those two categories? What does that define in your life? The number for your name and the number for your birth. So what's the difference between those two? Okay, so we actually start from the date of birth. Everything starts from your date of birth. And that's just from there, we pick up your best vibration. 
And then from those, see, because everything has to be tuned with your energy, mm-hmm. okay, with your basic energy. That's how right. it goes. Okay, so you would, if, if you were going to buy a house, you would probably go with your date of birth number more than you would your name number. See, name number is also very important. Now, what is okay. important a name number is? How your name vibrates, your popular name. So how it vibrates in the universe. Or what people mm-hmm. call it, what's your popular name? That's what vibrates a lot. See, my official name is Jasbir Singh Kelsey. That's on my citizenship and everywhere. That's my official name. But I use Jesse Kelsey. You know, that's yeah. more of my popular name. But yeah. Th- so that's how I did that. Okay. It's funny. I saw your name and I'm like, oh, okay. That didn't sound completely Indian. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You're absolutely right. I mean, that's just a popular name to vibrate with my numbers. But to yeah. answer your question, Ron, so yeah, we always start from our date of birth and from there we pick the best vibrations. And then we always try to adjust our names to our best vibrations. That's the idea, right? Adjust our names. Maximize okay. and make the vibration stronger and larger, right? Yeah, like a Catherine could be a Katie or a Kitty or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Let's look at the name Ron. Ron, seven, eight, nine, and five is 14, right? And so I said one in five is a number ruled by Mercury at five. So that's a good number for him. Okay. Bubble oh, because his real name is Ronald. You can call me Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> but Ron is a good name. Ron's good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, very good. Excellent. Perfect for him. Communication. I'm sure he's known by this name everywhere, too. And that's what she just said. Healthy Home Hacks podcast, Ron and Lisa. Yeah. He's the communicator for sure. What about Lisa? I know we're getting personal here. We're getting personal. So Lisa has three or four. So your combination together, right? It's, it's like the five and eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's, it's the five and eight combination. I know you a few. This is actually wedding. A blue sapphire and an emerald. Oh, okay. Mm. Connection is really good. The name Ron and Lisa. How long have you been doing this podcasting together? Podcasting. Gosh, Ron, how long? Four years? Three? Maybe three it was four. four, right? So three and a half. Yeah, I can't remember the exact kickoff date. Yeah, so this name vibration works really, really well. Oh, wow. Mm. But we've had Ron and Lisa, our business, for over probably 13 yes. years. The name Ron and Lisa. There you go. So who's the sapphire and who's the emerald? So Emerald is uh, Iran and you are the blue sapphire here in the names. Okay. All right. So cool. Now we know what to get each other as gifts now for sure. So, okay, we'll move forward here. Thank you for that, that tip. I was certainly appreciate it. But Jesse, how can we explain the original method of number patching that you created and how can it drastically improve a home or business vibration? Okay, excellent question. So see, number patching is something that came to me as I walked along my journey here in the United States. And so number patching is a technique by which, you know, we use smaller numbers, which are actually planetary energy into existing numbers with the idea to shift the vibration. And so now going back to that earlier number, I was trying to explain to you number one and eight together in any form. So say, for example, I mean, I have many clients over the years, one and eight, right? So they ask me, hey, Jesse, what do we do? And we can't, we have a lease here, we can't move from here, what do we do? Then typically looking at the date of birth, and I would suggest a patch. So a patch would be something that would lower that energy. It won't kill it completely because the frequency is very strong, but it'll make it a little livable for some time until mm. they can find another place. And what would typically happen is, say, for example, 108 on a residence passed with the date of birth of all occupants with a common number, which is more Venus, which kind of Venus is kind of common for all numbers. You bring that in and depending on how it sits, you go six in the beginning or in the middle or in the end that I have to see. But if six comes in there, it'll shift the vibration of Venus. Because what happens is Venus works well with Saturn. Saturn won't bother Venus energy. Mm. Saturn does not. So it's, it's just like going back to Lisa's case. So Lisa has a lot of Venus energy, but her name Lisa has Saturn energy, right? So that wouldn't bother you because, because six and eight are compatible. They kind of flow at some level together. Got that. That's how it goes. That's really cool. Yeah, so, so that's how you patch a number like 108 with a six. But then before we patch it, what we do, we choose the best number uh, based on the energies of all the occupants of the place. So it's not just like one person only, all the occupants. And then sometimes you know, people either cross over or some people leave or then you can, you can readjust it. And then the idea is to maximize the energy at that stage or whatever it is. And, and also at the same time for a heavy number like that, a patch will always shift the energy. It'll point the occupants to something that will come to them, right? So they can move in the right direction. Like a little compass there. You just say, oh, there's something will come and they'll move in that right space. Otherwise, if you're just living in a difficult number like that, then it'll be hard for them to find the right move to, you know, like a right. Mm-hmm. Right. So you, get them, you know, one to the other, right? And I've seen mm-hmm. people like that. They, they, you know, I've seen very educated people too, PhDs and very qualified people, right? And I'll quickly tell you, there's a friend, um, there's actually a client of mine up here in the Hayward Hills. He's a PhD from Cal State Hayward, right? And one day he invited me and he went to his residence and he was out mowing his lawn. So I looked at his number, I said, 
or you know, whatever his wife had divorced him already, he was all by himself there, right? Mm. <laughs> and it didn't surprise me at all that he's a professor or whatever. I mean, he knows this, I'm sure he knows this stuff very well, but he doesn't understand how deep that information outside is. But I didn't mention that to him, but I mean, I just met, and you know, it, it is all right. you don't talk until you're asked. Always good to keep your mouth shut. You don't have to volunteer to pay your number. No, 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 you don't do that, right? Oh, right, right, right. You wait till he asks you. Yeah, if someone wants to know, then they'll ask the wives. Yeah, that's true. Otherwise, keep it zipped. The rolling. So do you tell them like, hey, I know a lot about numbers and how they can affect you, but you don't even mention that, right? No. No. No, I don't mention No, I don't. So yeah, no, actually, as a real estate broker, I have, have a company. That's my principal business, actually, property. And my business is on my broker's license. My wife and my daughter, they run it. So if you have a lot of people come to me and just like this, we have this one girl up in San Mateo. She called me a Chinese lady. They're reading for her. She said, why don't you come and list my house? I said, no, I cannot list your house. Like $3.8 million listing. I said, see, I cannot list your house because I don't want you to think that I'm steering you to, you know, because I'm giving yeah. the number. So I'm as a broker, I'm going to sell your property. I said, no, I cannot do that. Yeah. I'll find another broker or agent, but I cannot do that. But I'll definitely do the number part. But for those who don't know, you know, and I don't tell them, and then if they want to buy, they'll buy. But I get into that. Right. That's but true. Was, earlier, I was kind of very direct and I to buy some homes to tell people, don't buy this and don't buy that. But now I'm, I've learned to know, sometimes people have their preferences, right? They say, who cares? What sure. Do, yeah. So the price that you list a house obviously would be extremely important, right? Very important, yes. Every number in that sequence. Every number is important, yeah, exactly. Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, because we watch that Million Dollar Listing. We love that show. And they even, they'll get really into a little bit of the science of the psychology of the numbers. Not this deep, yeah, but just... Yeah, it does. Certain numbers that people... A lot of you see that 888 all the time, right? They'll put like 3 million and then 2 and triple eight or something like that, right? Yeah, that's not good. It works, yeah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I have this one client of mine living in Kuala Lumpur, and then from there, a lot of money, they go online and find a property here in Santa Monica, LA, right? Yeah. And I'll say, oh, they found a property right next to a bank, right? And her brother lived there. So they bought it for like three points, some six million or something. So the husband wife flies straight in, and then they come and occupy the house. But the house number had two ones. And let me tell you, 11. So you have three ones is good. If two ones, 11. See, people think 11 is a master number, which is true, it is. But what happens is when sun comes twice, but in your case, three is different in right. energy. But if sun comes two times, then it brings relationship challenges. Interesting. Oh, listen up, listeners. Wow. Get rid of that 11 in your house. <laughs> then what happens is a lot of these people I've seen, you know, they'll go to these psychics and intuitors and say, hey, you know what, number, oh, you know, it's a master number, buy it. And they have no idea what that number oh. is. But I've seen this for years. Is a single one okay? Even one is different completely. Okay, yeah. A triple one won't bother you, but a double one will absolutely bother you. What about, I guess this would be bad then, 1111? Because that's also, people have a lot of... 1111 depends on, on a residence. Okay. 1111 on a residence will work with someone with like a one date of birth. It'll work. Mm. You know, well, see what happens is generally the number one and the number four are mirror images. They're very compatible. Oh, they're compete. So if Juan goes and lives in a four ones, right? Have, he'll have no problems. Okay. But if you go there, it won't work for you. Wow. If you visit it? No, no, Lisa, if you live in a triple four or with four ones, yeah. that won't work for you. Okay. They said it won't work for you. You know why? Because Venus, it work for him. And it won't work for Ron. It'll, no, it'll work for him because he has sun energy. So what happens? Oh, but w- some people who come to the house, it wouldn't work for. No, I'm talking, I mean, see, if there's a residence, so one, 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 11, 11. Okay. So now... For Ron, he has sun energy. Basically, he has ones and fives. If he gets into a residence like that, he will be able to hold it. Oh. It will bother him. But say, if you want to get into that resident, it will not work with you at all. Oh, it wouldn't work with me. At all. Oh, all those ones? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like China. China has the energy of Venus. There's 15 energies, China. And what happens is, whenever that energy comes with a four combination, which is fours and sixes, Venus and Venus, whenever they come together, there's huge challenges. Like, look, 2020. 2020 and China with the 16th year, what happened? They got hurt to get to the world. Right. They give COVID. So, but that's how it comes. So, oh. six and four, fours and six in cycles. This is even more deeper than that, you know, because we all have different date of births and, you know, all that different planet cycles keep changing. And our cycles change on our birthdays every year. So, around that time, it changes every time. Oh, okay. So, we need to be aware of that. So, okay, we kind of talked about the endless combinations of numbers on homes or businesses that are responsible for success or failure, happiness or depression. What is something a business could do that needs help with their success and financial 
what's something they could do if they are struggling, like which a lot of businesses are, small businesses are right now. See, the business name is very important. The name too, yeah. Name is very important. And then, of course, the address is very important. But say, for example, you're running a food business, anything with food, liquor, wine, whatever food, it's the groceries, that energy typically works with twos and sevens, with moon and Neptune energy, but typically more with the number seven. That food business is always that energy. So, so if you have a food business and your number outside is 80 or 80, it won't run. Oh, okay. As you want, it's not going to run. And then again, you look, go back to the owner's information. Right? I mean, what is your date of birth? And oh, they say, oh, I'm working. We work so hard and we blah, blah, blah. Nothing is happening, right? Yeah. People are stealing and then employees are stealing, mm, right? Right. So then a patch would come and you get a patch that place. But then the name of the business is very important. The name. Okay. So just changing the name. Well, I had a question too. When you go through your name, would you include your middle name when you're coming up with that number? Does it matter? Yeah. You know what it is? We'll go with the date of birth first. And then we look at the popular names. What are people calling you? And I was like, what is your popular name? What's vibrating? And then we yeah. have the full name as well. I mean, mm-hmm. on your business license, you can check all that too. Yeah. And then again, every business is not for everybody. You can't be like you guys, you know, be a podcast and be around celebrities. Everybody can't be there because that vibration will not bring them there. Right. That's so interesting. Wow. Yeah. But it's like that. And then it's important to know your energies and then get into that business. Yeah. Going the other way around, right? Yeah. Finding that out first. Wow. It is really fascinating. Well, Jesse, how does the timing of numbers and how can anyone listening work with and not against the cycles of life to make progress and eliminate confusion and frustration? You know, so typically, you know, well, basic date of birth. So I'll give you my example. So my, like I said, my energy, April the 3rd, I have about threes and nines energy. So with me, what I see, what happens is like my numbers, threes and nines. I'll go with the day I'm born, number three. So always the earlier part of the year, which is Saturn energy, because it's the cold season, Saturn is cold. So January and February, pretty much all the way till about the 21st of Feb, has that cold energy. So that is Saturn energy. So that is cold. You know, I avoid doing anything in that period. I've seen that. I won't even travel in that time because you know what? For me, it will not work. But Ron wants to travel in that time, it'll work. Okay. If you want to travel in that time, it'll work. You don't mm-hmm. want to go travel. Maybe Interesting. Go to Italy and spend some time, it'll work. But if I want to travel, it will not work. Wow. And then like signing a contract, like you would definitely avoid signing a contract on a certain day, correct? Certainly, absolutely. Day, if you look at the day, if you look at the timing, many things, you know. In fact, just recently, a friend of mine, he bought this huge facility here, very uh, savvy businessman, and he got into the, he was buying a couple of gas stations together. So he made a deal with this guy and escrow. I mean, everything was done, right? Loans approved. He's ready to sign and everything. Suddenly what happens? The seller, you know, he backs off. Oh, he says, I didn't know that this is worth so much. The appraisal, I didn't realize this appraisal was 360000 higher, blah, blah, blah. And on the sell you, he dragged the poor guy. I mean, he closed yesterday. We'll use some, whatever we did, we did. We have oh, my God. Oh, wow. Something like that. And look at how often that happens in real estate with that, you know, yeah. things like that, sale falling through, getting up in. Another very interesting thing, Lisa, just this morning, I was talking to my cousin's sister. She lives in Nebraska, my brother-in-law. He's been there for many, many years. He's a professor of computer science in the Lincoln in the University of Nebraska, Dr. Jitinder Diogan. I was talking to my sister this morning. And she told me that, you remember that you were here last time for my daughter's wedding and some years ago, and this one guy who was solemnized the wedding and all. I said, yeah, yeah, I know the guy named. He says, yesterday, a few days ago, he won a lot of $50 million. <gasps> oh, oh, wow. Indiana. So why did he win? Because he had a lucky name. No, what, what was? I don't know that. I don't know. The oh, okay. He won. He, I don't know his date of birth, nothing. 50 million? 50 million. Oh my gosh. That's wow. And then she tells me what happened the very next day. Somebody came to the store and stabbed the wife several times. <gasps> Can you believe that? Oh no. Trying to get the money? Oh, I don't know anything. I'm just telling you, right? How a vibration. So that definitely has some very positive vibration, right? To pull that money in. Honestly, I don't remember very clearly. But again, that see how that energy came and then how that bad luck came. I mean, it always comes and money comes in lotteries and things like that. It always brings a ton of garbage of the two, you know? You got to deal, right? You would have to be aware of that, right? Because you can. Yeah, yeah. You're saying the wind sometimes brings bad energy too? Yeah, it does. Oh, but you could fix that, I assume? Donate. You have to donate most of it. I'll keep a little bit, but give it back. Oh, right. Because the energy, right? The cycle of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Donate it. Don't make it stagnant. Help the poor, yeah. Right away. As much as you can, donate it. Are you saying just on a win or are you saying if you come into a lot of money, period? You know, in our tradition, right, in the Sikh religion, right, typically we, uh, we grow up with a 10% every month. So whatever we make every month, right, 10% we just give. 
Right. Oh, just to anyone, not to a church per se? At a church or needy or whoever. It's set like that. If it is a lot of money, then you better be ready to give more than that. Yeah, I would agree with that. I have a lot of Christian friends who are really, really so good about it. I mean, it's just ingrained. They give 10% without question, and it's just a way of life. And a lot of people don't do that. Some people do. And it keeps coming back. But see, the thing is, when you give to get, right? So it's, it's just like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Business, you should know that. Business people should understand when you make money, you know, you should give. And mm-hmm. it's like you anyway, but please give, you know? So just real quick, and the one question you said, so during your birthday month, you said it was a cold period, the two months before, you can't travel then because I'm not of that same birth period. Are you not supposed to travel during your birth season? Is, is that why? No, it's not that. So I'm sorry, we just went the other way. So what happens is, you know, so like you're asking for cycles, right? Yes. So like I was telling you my birthday, right? And then I said the threes and nines and that part. But then what happens is March works for me, May works for me, and then the end of the year, November, December, right? October, November, December, that energy. And that's pretty much, that'll work for Lisa too, you know, that energy, more like March, March, May, and the end of the year, right? These months typically would heighten your frequency, you know, we just love this sometimes, right? And it'll work for you like that. But for Ron, right, like these cold months are really good. So you want to say, for example, if he produces a film, a movie, and he wants to release it, and we say that like any day after December the 15th, well, actually there's one very famous Indian star, his name is Amir Khan. He's a billionaire. And, and he's born on March the 14th, I remember. Whenever he creates a film, it's always released on the 15th or the, around 15th, and, between the 15th and 20th of December. Oh, time. okay. Hmm. Movie releases. Wow. It's just like everything. And, and it's interesting. I mean, that he has a lot of mercury there. And each time he does that, he, I mean, there's the blockbusters are created. You know, that is timing. timing. Yeah. Like Nikola Tesla says, everything, the universe is made up of energy, frequency, and vibration. And you probably heard about the water experiment with Dr. Marisau Emoto, I think is his name, where he said words to the water, like negative, negative words to some of them and positive, positive words. And he studied this over like weeks upon weeks. And he looked in under the microscope at the water crystals at the end of the experiment. Some of the water he didn't even say anything to. He just had negative words taped to the glass that the water was in. The crystals in the negative water were like black and disfigured and ugly and the ones in the positive, those ones were given love energy and positive re- affirmation. They were gorgeous. They looked like snowflakes, all different shapes and crystals. Yeah, I believe that. The energy so quickly, yeah. Yeah. So can you share with us some of the energies of famous addresses, politicians, and celebrities? Yeah, there are many. I mean, yeah, I have uh, celebs. I know some. I'm, I won't take their names, though, you know, but some actually I know quite a few. See what happens in Bollywood and India. I know these people who live on the, you know, the water line of uh, Juhu and all that, and on the Arabian Sea, right? Their homes have names, you know? Mm, yeah. <laughs> they don't have numbers. They have the names, oh, they don't you know? do numbers, just names? Oh, no, because they are famous oh, right. people, right? Like so their chateau. Have, is going to say, yeah, I guess they do that in Hollywood a little too. Villa, for example, yeah. right? Or Lisa's cottage, something like that. I mean, whatever yeah. it is, right? But it, it's a right, name, right? right. So this gal, you know, I mean, uh, this one gal, and oh, you will see her name on my website too if you, if you see her there. She's been there since a very young age and the family of singers, very, very famous. She's a very good friend of mine. So she called me this last year when she was here in Hollywood. And so, so I asked her, so what's your, she said, no, we don't have an address. I have a name outside. And I said, what's the name? So I said, the name is working with your energy, but the color of the name is black. It's written in black letters. Oh. So, right. I said, that was not working with her frequency. Right. So, so this, you know, use gold, like some nice, strong, brassy letter. And which she did. She believed me, you know, so much. And she did. She changed the colors. Yeah, she did. She sent me a picture later, and the thing started shifting for her. It was so amazing. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah, so this is some other things for her. Yeah, too, so huh? the color. Like, if you were to live, yeah. I mean, the farmhouse style is very popular, and you see a lot of, like, really contemporary farmhouse kind of architecture that's black. It's, it's kind of a new trend. Would you say that that is a protective energy to have around your house, or is that... I wouldn't say that. No, no. no. I wouldn't stay in a place with too much dark energy, no. Mm-hmm. It's basically dark energy. Like right? When you go into a new house, you look at the light. Where's the light? This has no, house has no light. Yeah. That's one thing that mm-hmm. you, of course, used to look at the vibration. Right? But honestly, you know, the dark energy, which is, honestly, I mean, even if you have a strong Saturn, I'll say, you know, use like more lighter colors and sunlight and all. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To lift your mood. Quick question for you too, Jesse. Actually, last one for you. Thanks for your time here today. Can you share with our listeners the proper use of jewelry, crystals, and tokens to elevate one's energy and expand our sense of awareness? Absolutely. 
So again, you know, crystals and gelatin crystals are associated with our date of birth and the best numbers that vibrate with us. Now, say for example, in my case, like I, I told you, April the 3rd. And so with my threes and nines, you know, what do you call red coral works great for me. And then a ruby works great for me, you know, which I'm wearing right now. Yeah, you're showing off the rubies. Is that your birthstone? Is your birthstone a ruby? Uh, yeah, okay. these are my gemstones. And I'll be honest with you, ever since I wore this, after I wore this ruby, right? You know, all these celebrities came in. Wow, okay. Oh, yes. nice. So many came, right? Yeah. My point is that that's what it does too. So now, if you ask me, you said, hey, Jesse, why don't you go wear a blue sapphire? It never works. <laughs> right. And Ron, what's your, do you know your birthstone, September? Is that a like Emerald. Emeralds. Oh, you're an emerald? Green emerald. Wow. So Ron's good with green. Okay. And then I know my, mine's a light green. green. And the pinky finger is like, it's worn by Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, right? The biggest star of India. Oh, really? Oh, really? Okay, I'm going to copy his yeah. ring. Yeah, we got to get to your emerald. And I, I know mine's a light green. Mine's the peridot. So we're just a green. Oh, you know what? Our first business was called Green Nest. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that, was a good, that was a good name. Run. We have a lot of green in our life. <laughs> right. yeah. Our book, yeah. too. Oh, my gosh. This was so incredible, Jesse. I could talk to you for like 10 hours. But thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. Enjoyed being here. And it's very nice to be with you, Ron and Lisa. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, you too, Jesse. Thank you. I'm so happy we met in Cross Paths. You can learn more about Jesse by visiting Jesse, and that's J E S S E, Kalsi, K A L S I dot com, or follow him on Instagram at I am Jesse Kalsi. To get all the links to today's show, head to ronalisa.com forward slash podcast and stay tuned for the next episode. Get ready to up level your health. See you then. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye. This episode of the Healthy Home Hacks podcast has ended, but be sure to subscribe for more healthy living strategies and tactics to help you create the healthy home you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content. See you on the next episode.